Visitors to Fordson High School often ask for a tour of the Media Center. It's understandable. When Fordson High School was built, the community asked the architect, Everett Lane Williams, to design a building that inspired learning. The Media Center and its art are a veritable temple of art as described by Clyde H. Burroughs, former director of the Detroit Museum of Arts. One of the most impressive pieces on display in the Media Center is this cartoon called The Triumph of Mordecai, which is often mistakenly called a tapestry. Before weaving a tapestry, artists would create a full-scale model of their design using tempera on cloth or linen paper. This was called a cartoon. The Triumph of Mordecai was purchased in Paris in 1926 for approximately $10,000. In today's dollars, the cost would be nearly $140,000. At the bottom of the cartoon, there is an inscription in Latin, Rex illum volvit honor, which means this is the man who the king delights to honor. The cartoon tells a story from the book of Esther in the Bible in which Xerxes, the king of Persia, asks Haman, a traitor, what should be done to a man who the king wishes to honor. Haman, believing that he is to be honored by the king, says it would be an honor to be dressed like the king, to ride the king's horse, to wear the king's crown in a parade through the city. Xerxes forces Haman to do all of this for his enemy Mordecai. Haman later dies on the gallows he prepared for Mordecai. Another copy of the cartoon is hanging in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. It was a gift from J. Pierpont Morgan in 1906. The original tapestry for which this cartoon was made is hanging in Windsor Castle in England. There are seven tapestries in the series. Fordson's cartoon is hanging on the west wall. It was prepared by Jean-Francois de Troyes in approximately 1738 when he was director of the French Academy in Rome. The seven paintings in the Media Center were created in 1927 by the Hungarian-born artist Zoltán Sepsi. Mr. Sepsi's art is represented in over 30 museums, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Detroit Institute of Art, the Royal Academy of Budapest, and the White House. There are six large paintings representing themes and developments in transportation. The series as a whole presents the romance and significance of transportation in general, with three panels dealing with the historical aspect of the theme and three on the significance of the subject. The two paintings on the east wall portray transportation of pioneer days with an ox cart or covered wagon, and the coaching days of Mary England showing the use of an old stagecoach. The paintings on the north wall represent modern transportation. The science of transportation, showing men at a forge constructing part of a locomotive. The beauty of transportation, portrayed with full-rigged sails of ships in the background. The benefits of transportation, or the results of transportation, showing a group of figures from many climates exchanging their native wares. Tying this group together is a lunette over the former entrance to the library, the apothesis of the Fordson High School. It shows a mother with her two children at her knee. Fordson is in the background. Learning is symbolized by the books, music by the harp, and athletics by a baseball bat and tennis racket. Between 1895 and 1916, renowned painter John Singer Sargent created a series of murals for the Boston Public Library called The Triumph of Religion. Over the main entrance of the Fordson Media Center, you'll find a study for one of the murals, The Frieze of Prophets, with Moses, the central figure, holding the tablets brought down from Mount Sinai. The prophets in their order from left to right are Zephaniah, Joel, Obadiah, Hosea, Amos, Nahum, Ezekiel, Daniel, Elijah, Moses, Joshua, Jeremiah, Jonah, Isaiah, Habakkuk, Micah, Hajah, Malachi, Zechariah. To the right of the main entrance of the media center is a large plaster statue of Abraham Lincoln 
a gift to the school from the first graduating class, the class of 1926. The original sculpture is 11 and a half feet tall, made of bronze, and sits on a pedestal that is seven feet high. It can be found on the East Lawn of the Chicago Historical Society. The sculpture is remarkably lifelike, and that is because the artist Auguste saint Gaudin used a life mask of Lincoln by the sculptor Leonard Volk. Next to the circulation desk of the Media Center, you'll find a copy of the Venus de Milo, one of the most famous sculptures in antiquity. Created by an unknown artist circa 100 BC, the original sculpture was discovered in 1820 in an underground cave on the Aegean island of Melos, with both of her arms missing. French sculptors in the court of King Louis XVII made a variety of replacement arms, but the king said to leave the sculpture as it was. From then on, ancient statues were left as they were found. In the book room near the windows, you'll find Nike Osamathrys. Created by an unknown artist circa 190 BC, the original sculpture can be found in the Musée de Louvre in Paris. The sculpture is considered the finest surviving example of Hellenistic Greek sculpture. It was discovered in 1863 on the Aegean island of Samothrace, after which it is named. Also in the book room, you'll find the statue Discobolus. The original was created circa 460 BC by Roman artist Myron, and unfortunately, the original has been lost. Copies of the work have survived, and Fordson's version is a copy of one of the best copies, as it has the head turned towards the discus. Four bronze statues of Mercury were created by Gaimbolna in 1580. Mercury was a messenger to the Greek gods. In our statue, Mercury points upward to Jupiter and is standing on the head of Zephyr, one of the four winds. The original statue was in a fountain at the Villa Medici in Rome, and water flowed over the breath of Zephyr, making it seem like Mercury was floating. Michelangelo's David was started by a different sculptor, Agostino di Duccio in 1501 and finished by Michelangelo in 1504. The sculpture depicts David from the Bible as he resolves to fight the giant Goliath, his sling held over his shoulder. The human proportions of the sculpture are almost perfect. The original piece is on display at the Galleria della Accademia in Florence, Italy. Created by the artist Lysippos in approximately 350 to 325 BC, the original bronze sculpture is lost. This copy shows an athlete scraping mud and sweat off his body before entering the baths. The best copy of the original is in the Vatican Museum. The original piece was displayed in front of the warm baths of Marcus Agrippa in Rome. Pride, Tradition, and Legacy the art and the media center at Fortson High School is rich with history represented through the ages. Since our beginnings, we have strived to instill in our students a sense of pride in Fortson and our community, celebrating not only its rich past, but also its invaluable future.